we are here with oh <laughs> we are here with uh two of the members of Herzog. Hey guys, I would love if you could Hello. just reintroduce yourselves real quick to our audience here at home. Nick, uh, please go first. All right, I'm I'm Nick and uh, Nick Tolar, and I play guitar and I sing in Herzog. And Tony? And I'm Tony, and I write the words in Herzog. I feel like this relationship is like such a cool dynamic thing that not a whole lot of bands have and not a whole lot of people would realize that this is kind of how Herzog has, has always operated. Um, tell me, I know we've talked about it perhaps uh, in the past on the show, but tell me a little bit about how that relationship kind of developed, Tony. Or Nick. <laughs> oh, he's not saying anything? Uh, okay. Yeah, so I met Tony at Cleveland State. <laughs> not to go too far back, but uh, I met Tony at Cleveland State in 2001. And we started writing probably 2002. Uh, we had a band called Expecting Grain. That was our first band. Uh, and then we've just been writing songs ever since. And uh, it's more of a friendship. It started as a friendship and grew into more of a writing thing. Um so yeah, that's you know we've been, yeah. I mean, I guess you know what is it twenty twenty one years we've been writing together. That's probably older than. That sounds uh, like a really long like time. I like I can't believe it's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Tony, were you? Uh, what, did you what did you go to CSU for? CSU for. Oh, political science. So obviously yeah, directly was... related to writing. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, when I met Nick, um, like, I was still, like, writing a lot of poetry and stuff like that, and that's, like, that's what Nick really liked, is he liked my poetry, which is ridiculous to say now, um, but yeah, so that's what I was doing, and then Nick's like, hey, I, I think we can, like, sing some of these, uh, but yeah, no, and, you yeah, know, political science, political philosophy was my thing back then, so. Very cool. And so, and we so talked a little bit about little Fiction Writer about earlier. Fiction writer. Yeah. And I just want to recap, recap again. Tony, what are some of the things that you were really focusing on with really this song? song? Oh, a fiction writer, like, it stems from, like, the grand artistic theory that art itself is always some type of untruth. There's always some type of rehearsal or artifice that goes into it, but the goal, at least our goal, is still to say something true. Um, and so that's, you know, the, the refrain to the song is I tell the, uh, um, I tell the truth. I'm a fiction writer. Like all our songs have some element of fiction or artifice and definitely rehearsal and, you know, abstraction. Like there are people like, I mean, Chris Keffer and all those guys have no idea what our artistic goals are, who are still working towards that objective of writing some true human connection, some true human experience. So I would actually... I would actually not beg to differ, not but I would, differ, say I would say that I always thought that I a lot of your songs were a little bit of autobiographical because I don't know. I mean, like kind of about, mm -hmm. part of the magic of being friends with Nick is that like it's not one of us and it's both of us, you know. Um, you know, especially now. I mean, like you know, I'm, I'm married, I got kids, so it's like my life is a lot less partying and exciting than it used to be but I still have a connection to the stories and those characters that I feel like I should say, I should represent those things. Um, and not necessarily my own personal experience of, you know, being in bed by 10. Like, so, and like, I, I hope somewhere in between, I mean, like, I hope somewhere in between that we hit on something real, but you know. Nick, do you Nick, enjoy, do you being, enjoy being, Tony's being Tony's mouthpiece? Tony's mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah. No, um, for the most part, <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I think, um, I don't know. I mean, that's what I mean about the friendship. I mean, I think, I think a lot of times what, what Tony means is like, he'll write, he'll write for me as well. You know, uh, we, most of the times before we write, we'll, we usually take a walk and just talk about our lives. 
And, uh, you know, that usually gives him some ammunition for when we actually sit down and do it. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of times that's how it starts, you know. We write really fast, I think, comparatively from what I've heard from other people. Uh, most times we sit down for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and we have a song. So uh, we try to keep it like that so it feels, um, I don't know, fresh. You know, we don't overwork things hardly ever. Um, and I don't know. I've enjoyed that, and that's part of, like, what we do. So I love that. So we're going to talk a little bit so about Wrong Way. Which is the next song that we're going to hear in our listening party. And this one will not be interrupted. So uh, tell us a little bit about this song. Nick, from your point of view from recording, was there any um, big stories that stood out to you? Uh, th- this is one of the songs we recorded. I Actually, this in the front we recorded with uh, Rick. So, yeah, the only thing was I, we did it really fast. I mean, um, I think I got together once with Juan and, uh, and Dave and Charlie, and we practiced it literally one time together. Um, and then we, not one time, but like one session. So, you know, we probably ran it ten times or something. And then we just recorded it with Rick uh, very shortly after that. And, um, yeah, just kept it simple. And it's kind of the most straight-ahead song we've maybe ever written. Uh, it's a pretty straight-ahead rock song. Uh, so, so yeah, that's, yeah, nothing special though, I guess, you know. And then Tony, from your point of view, what is this song kind of about? (laughs) Uh, this song, like, this song takes heavily from, uh, there's a George Jones song called Wrong's What I Do Best. Uh, it's, you know, 90s George Jones. Um, I just thought that kind of, like, poking fun at the idea that, you know, I can't do anything right. Uh, like that kind of despair that you know i feel sometimes but still it's kind of like yeah it works out um it worked out for george so we de- I mean, like this song is you know he- like i don't don't play it back to back with the original because it makes us seem really uncreative all right well we are gonna take a listen to that right now here on live from cleveland at home he's saying we
was the song Wrong Way by Herzog. <laughs> and you can find that off of their new album called Fiction Writer, which is out now on Exit Stencil Records. Uh, actually, it isn't out now. Isn't this coming out on the 19th, Nick? Uh, yeah. Friday, yeah. Mm-hmm. This Friday. That's the 19th, and yeah. But it is up on Bandcamp, and people can Mm -hmm. listen to it. And tell me a little bit about why you decided to Mm -hmm. release this album um, as you did, with kind of one song every month. And you started that about a year ago, so like about the time that we went into quarantine. Mm -hmm. Um, Just like outline that a little bit for people. Yeah, so um, the record we did prior to this one took like a long time to release it took like three and a half years and um so we just i mean the existential was like hey we want to have a quick turnaround um so i was like well let's try to do a record or a song a a month actually with the intention of not releasing a record at the end initially Hmm. so um yeah we were just trying to do a uh you know a song a month and then they decided to collect them at the end but um so there's not really it, it was meant to just be singles it's not like a cohesive record necessarily just a collection of songs hmm. um but yeah it was the reason and i figured this way it would give us more time to mix each month while one of the songs was out you know so it would come out over the course of a year as opposed to on one specific date you know it does kind of seem like you did it on so purpose yeah, that's why we did that <laughs> um because you know it, we didn't really oh, have we, a whole well, lot we, no we did you. but not 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 in terms of well yeah yeah but that i mean that was totally just no one predicted that but uh <laughs> that was See, just coincidence for sure yeah herzog did um, not cause covid no i mean yeah. we planned to do it, so. no <laughs> no no we didn't um no. and so the first singles <laughs> that you started releasing were was that back in january of 2020 or when was the first one that came out if you can remember. Yeah, I think it was December or January. I can't remember. One of those two months. Because mm-hmm. um, I think we did 12, one a month. So, uh, And I think it, the last one was December. So, Or no, it might have been. Yeah, it was January. Because there was one song on the record that we didn't release as a single. It was a song. Um, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. But uh, Dave McHenry, the guitarist from the band, really wanted that song on the record. So I said, well, let's throw it on there. So that's what we did. Yeah. It was like an out, not an outtake, but it was just to be on another record and we ended up not uh, putting it out. So, mm-hmm. so that's, um, what, that's what happened there. Yeah. We're going to play another song off of it real quick here. Um, it is called Shadow. Tony, are you back with us? Can you try to un- unmute your mic? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. You are awesome now. This is perfect. Can you hear me? So, yes, I can. Feels like I'm here. Okay, you are, you are. Okay. Tony. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Shadows is, uh, oh, Nick really likes this song. Um, you know, I, I played it for a couple of people. I used to work at the Beachland Ballroom for a real long time, uh, and so this song is pretty obviously set there. Uh, and so a lot of people have, like, picked up on that, and it's like, yeah, it's just, it's a snapshot of a place and a time and a feeling about, you know, kind of, Especially looking at people, which I, it's you know now that we don't we do this with people, we look at them on video screens, kind of like something that we took for granted. It does encapsulate that feeling really, really well. And uh, Tony, you were indulging in a uh, lights on logger a little earlier. I don't know if you still have that that around. There it is. So that's oh, cool. Um, this is from the Happy Dog. Uh, this is actually the last of the four pack. I've been steadily drinking them. Like, I don't think that anyone should buy beer and not drink it. So, <laughs> of course, save our stages. Shout out to Mark and Cindy. Shout out to Sean. Shout out to Kathy. Shout out to Mayalls. Uh, they've been great. And we really are happy that they're still going to be here. If you are of the requisite age, correct. <laughs> uh, but, no, that's awesome. I got course, to... Herzog is a very law-abiding band. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go and support Grog Shop also, so if you're uh, at home watching, we are we are rocking the merch. But Tony, I kind of wanted to ask you: um, uh, Do you have any like favorite stories from when you worked at Beachland as a bartender? Oh, the Beachland? Oh, like like. Oh, 
Um, yeah, I worked there for 12 years. I worked, I worked mostly the door. I worked uh, ticket take and stuff like that. Uh, and I, know, I was hired for my dancing ability because Mark used to run the Soul Nights and would see me up on the Soul floor. Um, I don't know. And like, I mean, like one of my favorite just weird things that happened is, uh, you know, they had a Soul Night there, and I was dancing with maybe Nick was there. Did you meet Glenn Tolbrook, Nick? Um, but anyways, Glenn Tolbrook was playing next door, and I didn't know who he was. So he came out to dance after his set, and we were, like, booty bumping him and, like, you know, just dancing up on the guy from Squeeze. And then Mark's <laughs> like, yeah, you should really know who that guy is because, I don't know, he's young. Um, yeah, that's a great place, man. Like, I, I saw Mark and Cindy actually this week. Uh, they're both on Team One Shot, so they'll be ready to go uh, in a couple weeks. So. I like that Team One Shot. The opening, too. You gotta, you yeah. gotta, uh, trademark that. <laughs> what, Team One Shot? Yeah. That's, that's I haven't heard that yet. Close to mine. No? Okay. okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so without further ado, I do want us to play Shadow to listen to this, uh, song. It's one of my favorites from this, uh, new album oh. called Fiction Writer as well by Herzog on Exit Stencil Records. Shadow cast 
was the song Shadow by Herzog, and they are joining us live here on Live from Cleveland at Home tonight. Thanks for tuning in to our live stream. Tony, it was just your birthday the other day. You're, you're, uh, I'm 40. You're fake, you're fake 40. 39, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel 40 right about now, so yes, I'm 40 years old. I feel like that's kind of a good transition into the next song that we're going to be hearing from the album, which is 20s, 30s. Uh, Tony, can you talk a little bit about the, some of the inspirations behind this one? You know, like, okay, so way back in the Herzog catalog on cartoon violence, there's this song called Shakespearean Actress. Uh, and it was a good song, but I guess I didn't feel we got that feeling of that experience, you know, because that was definitely something that like, happened to me. Um, and so we went back and pretty much, you know, recaptured a lot of those events and did it much more effectively now. Because we got that chorus that goes through that, that kind of like, when you meet somebody who, I mean, it's like, Rachel, you're slightly younger than me. So it's like that kind of like mental math that happens sometimes. Like, oh, you're this much younger than me. And that actually somehow makes a difference. When in fact it doesn't. It's still just two people being awkward around each other and trying to impress each other. Um, but you know, it's just kind of like always in the background of, you know, a meeting, a first meeting. This song actually does remind me like so much of that cartoon violence, um, era. So I'm happy that you said that because I definitely felt that for this yeah, song, I mean, like, which is cool. We go back and we release things and if we don't like it, we'll go back and do it again. Um, it won't sound the same because they're not like covers, but it's like, there's only so many stories that we can mine and go over again. So like this, you know, uh, the experiences that happened to me here, it's like, yeah, that's still like in my mind. And I don't think we did it right the first time. So let's try it again as a, a new song. And so we cooked up a couple more different parts and worked it back out as a completely new song. Um, with, you know, the same, a similar feel, but just better. Like, I'm much happier with this one than I was with Cartoon Violence. And then, Nick, maybe talk a little bit about how you approached this kind of version of the song differently than you had done on Cartoon Violence. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, you cut out a little bit, but I think I know what you're saying. Um, yeah, um... This song, the riff I had for a long time, so maybe that's partly it. I don't know. Um, I've had this riff for, I don't know, since 2006 maybe. And I've tried writing a song with that riff uh, at least three or four times, and this is the first one that stuck. Um, and then, yeah, and then it's we did, we did this a lot back in those days, like the song um, Rock and Roll Monster, where we kind of just sandwich three or four songs together uh, into one thing. And uh, I always, I always dig doing that. I think it's fun. I don't know how the listener perceives it or whatever, but uh, I, I like doing stuff like that. Um, dating don't back to Nick, like, they'll never know. Like it just looks like one song. Um, but to us, sure. it's really interesting because yeah. well, that's kind of how we intend and, to keep going is by stitching things together differently and better each time. Like that's kind of our longevity plan. Yeah, and for me, it dates back to listening to the White Album specifically. Happiness is a warm gun. That's kind of like where I learned that 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 was the first time I heard a song that did that. You know, it kind of put three or four songs into one song, and I just thought it was cool. And you know, having ADD, I mean, that's just like what you do. You just hook to hook to hook. You know, so for sure. Well, let's play that song, 20s, 30s, and then when we come back, uh, we will be talking a little bit more to Nick and Tony, talking a little bit about what her song is going to be up to in the future. I know there's a lot of unknowns, but we will try our best to to think about what is coming up uh, right after this song, 20s, 30s. i 
wondering whether it is uh the same listening over a zoom call to her song songs with tony varel as it is in person at the happy dog with tony varel it is very similar <laughs> still singing still still repping the brand hard <laughs> um tony i do love yeah oh my gosh i do we want to give people the experience of being at a herzog show without actually putting one on 
<laughs> exactly, yeah. So it was kind of hard to get you guys on to live from Cleveland because, you know, there are some concerns around COVID and the fact that you all haven't practiced together for such a long time. So, um, Nick, can you talk a little bit about that, like how this year has gone for the band and, and what kind of changes you made to adapt to it? I mean, yeah, we haven't played together since March last year. Um, we've we've gotten together to do finish up recordings, uh, like mixing and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's just you know, like for everyone else, it just sucks. You know, you got to wear a mask the whole time, and it's um, you know, I mean, you guys know how that is. Four hours of wearing a mask sucks. So yeah, but other than that, I mean. Um, you know, you just do the best you can. I don't know. I mean, we didn't get a lot done, you know, in terms of uh, writing at all. But we got we're finishing up. We got a couple records in the works. So uh, very different stuff. There's a acoustic record we're going to release probably some point this year, and um, and a uh, record we've been working on for I guess ten or eleven years now. Kind of it's it was the record I wanted to originally follow Search, but it just it just took me forever to write songs like. Uh, you know, like uh, that are on that record, They're a little moodier, a little more dissonant. So it's not like my natural thing. So it just took a while to to get the right songs. I uh, that that album, the acoustic one, has been something that you've kind of had in the works for a little while. Um, did you feel like it just like wasn't the right time these past mm-hmm. months to put it out since you're putting out all these other singles as fiction writer, or what's been kind of going on behind the scenes with that? No, it's just not done. It just took a long time to finish. Like I've been working on the vocals for a while, and I finally we we finally compiled everything together. And this guy Mike Tolan from the band Talons, a uh, really fun band. Um, they uh, he's gonna mix it, so uh, I gotta take it over to his place uh, for him to start. So um, you know, we'll see how long that takes. You know, I. I told him do whatever you want, you know. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try to have not that much input. Just let someone else take the reins and see what happens, you know. So. Mm-hmm. So that yeah, I mean it's just I mean records just take a long ass. They just take a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. To make. Th- there was a lot of songs that are, were on this album that came out that you guys were actively playing um, when you went to South by Southwest in in 2019. So um, you've had them for for a while. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, probably less than other records, but um, like, for example, there's a record we're going to release in um, either called Hospice. Uh, we don't even have a title for it, but anyways, that we wrote in like 2010, and it's going to not, probably not be released till next year. So. All the songs do, on you know, this, goes. I'm a Fiction Writer were completed before this all started, so they were all, most of the tracking was done by last March, and so that's kind of been made this last year a lot easier for us because we had material pretty close to ready to go. There was just a couple of little details, um, and that definitely made life a lot easier uh, this last year, being able to release something every month, having something to go to, um, not be completely dry. For Mm -hmm. sure. And we're going to keep rolling with this listening party here for uh, Fiction Writer because we are kind of, we are wrapping up on time. But let's play Let's Not Be Mean Tonight. Uh, Tony, what is this song about? Sorry, you just muted yourself again. (laughs) I should be back. I'm back. Uh, Again, this is another, uh, this is an even older rewrite of a song called Bug Bites, which was on Irish Twin, which is an Expecting Rain album. Uh, You know, just that kind of, like I, obviously, you know the song. The song title kind of gives it away. It's kind of a plea for compassion and just you know being nice to each other. Like one of the things that you know, like I'm really sensitive about my guitar playing. I'm not very good, and so like sometimes, like if I show something to Nick, it's like, hey, just, just let it be. Like don't you know, don't fight with my guitar playing because it'll you know someone else will do it better. So it's like that kind of thing. But that's you know, it's a moment of trust. Like anytime anyone like sings for you or plays a guitar for you. Um, you, you know, there's the unspoken thing of like, hey, just, you know, please be nice. Please listen to me. Um, you know, even when, you know, kind of, you know, perfect, you know, player. Um, so 
That is not how I interpreted this song, but that is very, oh, very it, sweet. Know. That is very sweet. Well, like, two it. people, like, sometimes people can be mean to, like, what you're saying, people can be mean to one another, but I guess I was thinking about it more so, like, in a relationship than, like, Nick bullying you, Tony. <laughs> Well, That's not bully. what it I, is. I don't want to say who the yeah. bully is, but he's not on this call. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Nick's not the bully. Nick is actually really nice to me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it's... I mean, like, you, of course, can read it that way. And that's definitely something... You know, I'm, I'm married, and that's definitely something that happens between me and my wife. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, please just be nice tonight. For once, you know, like, that kind of... You know, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens, you know. We we're not. I think I think Tony, what you're saying about the song and what I'm saying about the song are actually two very similar concepts. Like it, it, we it's, should. It's really close. They, they, yeah. They together. You want you want to be your your best self, and sometimes you're you're not. You know, you you're worried that you're not presenting as your best self. So I like that. That's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> All right, we are gonna listen to "Let's Not Be Mean Tonight" by Herzog. This is off of their new album, Fiction Writer. And it'll be coming out this Friday on Exit Stencil Records, so look out for it. It'll be on Bandcamp and all that good stuff. We'll ask them where you can find it when we come back in just a few minutes. Thank you for tuning in to Live from Cleveland from Home. 
Uh, I'm Rachel H. And we are here with Herzog. We're here with Nick uh, Tolar from Herzog. Tony had to bounce because his kids are home now. Um, two really wonderful uh, kids. <laughs> but I was going to ask um, you, Nick, even before Tony left, it's really interesting to hear that so many of your songs, I feel like, are very self-referential, um, just from what you and Tony have kind of told me about making this album. Since you are kind of one of those Cleveland um, legacy bands now at this point, do you have a favorite Herzog album, if you had to pick one? Um, I mean, for me personally, it would be Search, honestly. Just because that's the record that's that started the band, you know? Um, so yeah, that that's probably my favorite record. Um, I mean, I, <laughs> it's, it's a, I mean, I did a lot of the stuff on that record, so I don't want to make it, easy, but it's just, it just meant a lot yeah. to me. Um, and, uh, yeah. you know, I wrote a lot of the lyrics on that record and stuff. And, um, yeah, it was like, uh, I don't know. I, uh, I still, I listened to that record for the first time about six or seven months ago and I don't even know how long. And I was actually like, I was genuinely like, proud of it, you know? Like when I listened back to it, I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I just I like really liked it." And I not often do I feel that way. So, I f I feel like there is some sort of bizarre time requirement um, for like when you feel kind of um, very still judgmental about the work that you've put out and the work that you've done, and then if there's and then if you wait long enough, you're really appreciative <laughs> of what you've yeah, put well, out yeah. and you've done, especially if it's yeah, especially if it's aged well. And I think that. Um, you know, like so much of Herzog's music has, it's only gotten more popular over time. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's true, but um, <laughs> like I think, uh, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's aged well or not. I mean, but it's, uh, I don't know. I hope there's always going to be a small niche for guitar bands, you know, um, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, where can people go to find this album online? Because it is going to be coming out on the 19th of March. So um, where's the best place that people can pick it up? I would say available? existential. That's existential.org uh, is the best place. Or Bandcamp. Uh, I think it's Herzog slash or... Uh, <laughs> I don't know it exactly. Uh, I Herzog know that... backslash Bandcamp. It's okay. Uh, yeah, and I know that yeah. um, also they can find you from Exit Stencils Bandcamp. I think that that is uh, yeah, one that right. has the more updated stuff on. So perfect. And you guys do yeah, have that's, Facebook, that's the um, Instagram, all that stuff as well. If people are interested. Oh, that was me. And Sorry. we have one more song. Oh, you're. <laughs> we have one more song that we are going to listen to tonight. Um, Nick, if Tony were still here, what would he uh, say about writing If You're Alone, You're in Our Band? Uh, yeah, that was, again, that was another song that we had a long time ago that we rewrote. Um, it was just about, yeah, yeah just try, just being in a band and not having success and, um, and just, you know, telling yourself and your band that, you know, um, you know, yeah, just like maybe lying to yourself, whatever, but just saying, you know, we're gonna we're gonna keep going, and one day we'll be successful. <laughs> but if you don't believe it's true, but just uh, say it anyways. For sure, it's a good message for these times right now. It's a good message for you know people out there that are are you know obviously feeling lonely at the moment. So we are definitely yeah. looking forward to the day when we can all gather again and go out to see some Herzog at Happy Dog or, or wherever the event calls for. So thank Absolutely. you so much, Nick, for joining us tonight. We are going to go right, thanks, out Rachel. with if you are alone. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. And we will, uh, we will talk very soon, my friend. I appreciate being on the show tonight. All right. Thank you. Thanks.
All right.